God's grace and peace are yours today and always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The sermon text today that we're going to give our attention to is recorded for us in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. This is the story of how Elijah, that prophet of the Lord, is taken up to heaven bodily, body and soul together. And it is this very same Elijah, of course, that we heard about in our gospel lesson who stands with Jesus on the top of the Mount Transfiguration. As we take a look at this amazing miracle of this man being brought up to heaven, we're going to take a look at it from the eyes of the man who was with him that day, Elisha, his son in the faith, a man who listened his every word and wanted to receive a special inheritance from this man, Elijah. By God's grace, he would receive it. By God's grace, so do we. Let's turn to this lesson recorded for us, 2 Kings chapter 2. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah was traveling with Elisha from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord is taking your master away from you? Then he said, yes, I know. Be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here because the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as surely as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. Then the sons of the prophets who were in Jericho approached Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord is taking your master away from you? He said, Yes, I know. Be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, because the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Then fifty men from the sons of the prophets came and stood and watched them from a distance. While the two of them were standing at the Jordan, Elijah took his cloak, folded it together, and struck the water. The water divided to the right and to the left. Then the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask me for whatever I can do for you before I am taken from you. Then Elisha said, Let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. He said, you have asked for a difficult thing. If you see me being taken from you, it will surely be yours. But if not, then it will not. While they were walking and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire came and separated them. So Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elijah was, Elisha was watching and crying out, my father, my father, Israel's chariot and its charioteers. Then he did not see him anymore. This is God's word. We pray. O Lord, sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I know it's Valentine's Day, but that's probably the last time I'm going to mention it. Instead, let's talk about fathers. You know, a good father is a great treasure. And a good Christian father is absolutely amazing. To have a good father who shows you, teaches you, talks to you, gives you wisdom, protects you, it's a great, great treasure. In fact, a good Christian father can be a real hero to his family. Just like as uh, Elisha looks at Elijah and as he sees him go into heaven, he, he points out his great value, in fact, his heroic qualities when he says, Israel's chariots and its charioteers. In the ancient world, the chariots and the charioteers were the heroes. They were the cavalry that came riding in to save the day time and time again. As Elisha watched his spiritual father go into heaven, he could not help but cry out, to the hero that led him in faith, Israel's chariots and its charioteers. 
a father. A father is one who is going to put the work in and guide his children. I, I remember my father very fondly, great man. There was one bit of wisdom that he taught me one day, and I've held on to it since then. He told me, never say the words, I know. Because those words don't help your argument at all. Really, in fact, when you say, I know, you're incriminating yourself. Because if you knew already, then why weren't you already acting on it and living according to what you claim you knew? Instead, when somebody points out something that you've done wrong, instead of saying, I know, say, I'm sorry, or I'll do better next time. Don't use the words, I know. In our text today, we hear Elisha use these words a number of times, don't we? As he travels with his father, Elijah, from place to place, as the Lord is directing him, the sons of the prophets come out to meet these two prophets. And when we hear sons of the prophets, we shouldn't be thinking children of the prophets. We should be thinking of that same kind of relationship as Elijah and Elisha had. Not any biological relationship, but one of spiritual, of one teaching the other, one mentoring the other, one fathering the other in their faith. And these sons of the prophets were the same. They were students. They were the ones, the mentees, the ones who were being mentored by the prophets, like Elijah and Elisha. They were probably very familiar with these two men. And it probably happened quite regularly that as these two men walked around the region, and they came to these different schools where the prophets were learning, these young men, they would probably come, these young men would come out to meet them and they would talk and learn from them. So it wasn't much of a surprise that as they traveled from place to place, like Bethel and Jericho, the sons of the prophets would come out and meet the two men. But as they did, these sons of the prophets, these young men, these students, knew something. They wanted to make sure that Elisha knew it too. And maybe they were young and brazen enough that they wanted to make sure that he knew that they knew that, and so on, so that uh, they could show off their spiritual abilities. Anyway, the point is, is they come up to Elisha and they say, do you know that today the Lord is taking your master from you? I know. Be quiet, he says to them. I know. Indeed, it is a true statement, and just as much as those young students of the prophets knew, Elisha already knew himself that this was the very day when the Lord was going to take Elijah away. We're not told exactly how they knew, some revelation from the Lord, that Elisha, as well as these sons of the prophets, and even Elijah himself had received. This was a very important day. A very important day for Elijah, Elisha, and for those students of the prophets. And as important of a day as it was, and how glorious of a day it was going to be for a man, anyone, to be taken up into heaven in a whirlwind, Elisha just didn't want to face it. He was going to lose his father this day. And it hurt him. And as much as he knew it, and he could say, I know, I know, I know. And as much as he knew that his father, Elijah, was going to be going to heaven, a truly glorious thing there to be with the one true God that he had served so faithfully, and he should be happy for him, that he would get to heaven without going through the pain and agony of death. Yet he kept saying, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Sometimes we know the truth. In fact, dear Christian, you do know the truth. The problem is not that we don't know it, but that we don't live on it, that we don't act according to it, that we don't have the emotions and the hearts to follow the truth that we know. A loved one is going to be leaving us soon. 
and rather than embrace the truth and the glory of a person, a dear one of our family and friends, neighbors going to heaven, we try and push it away, hold off on it, try not to talk about it, ignore it even. Or we see the trouble in people's lives and we become afraid. And we ourselves try to hold off danger or disaster or trouble as far as we possibly can. Even though we know the truth that our God will be with us, even though we walk right through the midst of any trouble or trial or difficulty or disease or even death itself, and say, the Lord be with me. Probably one of the greatest examples of, of where we all fail at this is that when we do face times of difficulty, rather than face it head on and come to the Lord in prayer, we try to just do it on our own. We forget or deny prayer. Instead of taking on the difficulties of this world and the stress of life and the losses that we face and say, Lord, be with me, and come to Him in prayer continually as He wants us to, and lay before His feet all the woes and troubles and difficulties and death in this world, and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. It is only by Your grace that I can take another step in another day. Be with me. Let your word be my strength and my God. For all the times where we try to say, I know, be quiet, try to avoid the realities that we face, we try to deny the, well, at least not acknowledge fully the God in heaven. For that we need a Savior. For that we need the message of the Father. In our gospel lesson, we heard of our Savior transfigured on the top of a mountain, just a few of His disciples with Him. And there we see Moses and Elijah, who were taken from this world, but now return there to stand with Jesus in glory, body and soul together like nobody else really could. amazing thing happens. As much as Jesus probably enjoyed being able to stand there and talk with these two great servants of the Lord, Moses, who led the people out of slavery in Egypt through trial and trouble and war and death to the very edge of the promised land, there to enter the land flowing with milk and honey, and Elijah, this man who served the Lord so faithfully, facing off against great enemies and prophets of Baal, calling down fire from heaven in prayer, praying and, it, and a drought happened just like that. And then when the time came, he prayed and it ended. Jesus himself was looking ahead to his great work of suffering and dying on a cross. And so that the disciples and you and I today can know where to find our hope in our salvation, the Father speaks from a cloud and says, this is my Son whom I love. Listen to Him. As the Father speaks from heaven, we listen to Him as a dear Father who loves us and cares for us, protects us and guides us wants uh, the best things for us, and we know that He will accomplish them. And when He says, this is my Son whom I love, listen to Him, He wants us to set aside all the temptations and doubts and troubles and fears, and to keep our hearts and minds focused on Him who is our salvation, to listen to Him, even when our own hearts are afraid and timid and want to run away. Listen to him. Talk about a hero. Talk about a champion. Talk about the one who comes in and rescues his people from their greatest of enemies. It is Jesus who came 
Yes, humbly, quietly. For brief moments, revealing His glory as He performs miracles, as He shows His glory on the top of the Mount of Transfiguration. For those that, like us, who believe that we might be reminded and encouraged that there is truth in His promises. In fact, they are truth. When He says that His blood pays for sin and guilt, when He says that His death has taken away the curse of death, when He says that His empty tomb tells us of eternal life and our own resurrection, we believe. And when He tells us that one day we, like Elijah and Moses, and even like Jesus Himself, we will be raised from the dead. We, body and soul, together in glory, to stand just like Moses and Elijah around our Savior, there to be able to not only speak to Him, but to be able to touch Him and enjoy Him. Heaven is not just some kind of philosophical idea. It's not just some kind of metaphysical or strange kind of spiritual existence. It is real as real as the objects around you. It is real as your own flesh and bones. You can touch it. You can taste it. You can feel it. You can walk around in it. That is heaven. Elijah, as he stands on the mountain, as he's taken up to heaven in a whirlwind, is an example of the truth of it. And Jesus himself proves it. As Elijah and Elisha come down to the Jordan River, Elijah takes his cloak off and folds it and strikes the water, and the water parts to the right and left, and they cross over to the other side. And knowing, as Elijah does, this son of his, Elisha, and knowing the trouble in his heart, he turns to him and says, Ask me for whatever I can do for you before I am taken from you. Isn't that a good father? Is there one thing I can do for you to help you? Elisha asks for something amazing, doesn't he? Let a double portion of your spirit rest on me. Such is the love of this son for his father. Let me be like you. Let me be like you in faith, in power of word and action serving the Lord. And, and if it is possible, let it be even more than you. Talk about a love. Talk about a desire to walk in somebody's footsteps. As you think about your father, as you think about Jesus and his father, we see the most important thing we could do, right? To walk as Jesus did, to listen, to love, to believe, and whatever may come, whether it be loved ones taken from us, or whether it be our own life of struggle and pain and suffering, as Elisha was certainly going to face as he walked the road alone after this, we have confidence that our Father, our Heavenly Father is with us always. And He has given us the most precious gift of His own Son. My Father, my Father, the chariots and charioteers of Israel, such as the hero of our life story, our Savior Jesus, and God our Heavenly Father, who by His grace has made you His very own and has given you amazing promises which are never going to be broken, a home 
an eternal home of such glory prepared for you since the beginning of the world. Let us walk with our Father home. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses our understanding, guard and keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. now turn to our Lord in prayer, asking for all of his blessings on us and all people. We we'll also include in our prayers special prayer on behalf of Heidi Johnson, who successfully came through surgery. We also pray for the family of Joyce Carnitz, whom the Lord called home to heaven this past week. Her funeral was yesterday. We pray. We praise you, O Father, for the precious gift of your Son. And as we see his glorious transfiguration on the mountain, give us the firm resolve to listen to him an eager readiness to believe his promises and the willingness to follow in his footsteps. By the sign of Moses and Elijah on that mountain, show us that blessed are the dead who die in faith, for they know the power of Christ's resurrection, and they shall be changed from glory into glory. God and Father, let your Holy Spirit live in us and transform our weak, sinful lives into lives that are full of goodness and purity and righteousness. Transform our minds and hearts, our understanding, our judgments, yes, our whole persons, that we might be like Christ. Take away sickness and pain, disappointment, despair, sorrow and sadness, pride and anger, selfishness and envy, hate and fear. Transform them by the healing power of our Lord into noble impulses, pure motives, kind thoughts, constructive deeds, true courage, and great faith. O oh Lord, we know that you are with us every day of our lives. We turn to you, asking that you would help us in every trouble to call upon you in our needs, knowing that you in love hear and answer them. We pray especially today for our sister in Christ, Heidi Johnson. We thank you that you have brought her safely through surgery. We ask that you would continue to bring her through recovery, that she may give you praise and thanks and honor you with a life that pleases you. We ask that you would bring her home soon. O Lord, we also give you thanks and praise for the life and faith of our sister in Christ, Joyce Carnitz. You gave her to us for a little while that she might be a blessing to us on our pilgrimage. We thank you that you have now fulfilled your promise to and brought her safely home to be with you forever. Continue to bless her family with true faith that looks in hope for the resurrection and eternal life that is prepared for them in heaven. We ask that you would teach us all true wisdom, that we may number our days aright according to your will, trusting in Jesus our Savior, knowing that eternal life is waiting for us all. O oh Lord, we ask that you would look on your church here and in every place and grant that all of us may continue to offer up to you the acceptable sacrifices of repentance and thanksgiving and obedience. Hear our prayer, and by your mercy grant all of our petitions for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
You may be seated. Let's sing our closing hymn, O Christ, our true and only light. Thank you for joining us for our worship today, especially those who joined us online or on the radio. We do want to thank our radio sponsor for this weekend. It's in memory of Gertrude Harmon. If you're interested in continuing to do that sponsor in the weeks to come, please call the school office and we'll be sure to put you on the list. Please be sure to call in plenty of time if you have a particular weekend in mind because we do have a, a number of people that have already signed up. Just wanted to highlight uh, that uh, the announcements that are in the bulletin. If you haven't picked up one of those, you could pick up one of those on your way out today. Also wanted to point out that we do have meditations for the, that are going to be starting at the end of this month. So if you haven't picked yours up for the coming months, please pick one up today. Also, the Forwarding Christ is available. Also today at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a call meeting. The two calls that we sent out for our principal position as well as first and second grade teacher were returned to us. And so we are going to uh, be um, uh, meeting today at 11 o'clock here at church downstairs. And there we are going to have a, a meeting where we're going to look at two call lists and extend calls. That's the plan. So please, voters, and really everybody's in, welcome to come and at least listen to that meeting. Uh, it'll be at 11, 11 o'clock here. Before we go... Uh, we have a special presentation. You can see the, it's already up on the screen. I invite our president of our congregation, Ricky Craning, to come forward and tell us a little bit more about our congregation and the work that we do together. Ricky. Good morning. Hello. Just want to make sure everybody's awake. Um, thank you for allowing me the time this morning to address you and give you our little quarterly update. So on the agenda this morning, I want to uh, touch on the congregation, the congregation of Goal update, and I'm going to have you guys meet the team. <coughs> so, 
So here's the lighthouse that uh, we have in the back to show how we are doing. Um, if you don't remember, our goal was to do $520,000 this year. Um, as you can see, we're, we're not at goal yet. We are under goal. But we're doing well, figuring with all the stuff going on with COVID then. So I don't, I don't want to take away from all the hard work that we have been doing. What I want to do is I want to continue to encourage everyone to keep doing their part. Um, you know, it speaks volumes seeing what we can do as a congregation, and I, I want to encourage everyone to do their part. And I want to thank the Board of Stewardship for their work on this goal. Um, I think the visual is great, and it's definitely uh, worth its time and effort that they put into it, so thanks to that board for doing that. So elections were held in January, and what I want to do is, uh, as part of this presentation, if I call your name, I want you to stand, and I want you to remain standing for the presentation. So let's meet the team. Our pastors, Pastor Ma, Pastor McKinney, please stand. Our school staff, our principal, Jim Hussman, our third and fifth through fifth grade teacher, Vicki Jensen, our first and second grade teacher, Lori Miller, our kindergarten teacher, Renee Hussman, our 4K teacher, Beth Ma, and our 3K teacher, Peter Kavicki. Also on the school staff is Katrina Stern, who is our school secretary, Tom Nellis is our school, school custodian, and Kelly Hackett is our school chef. Our board of ed, Pete Swoboda, Roger Kirkman, Justin Janner, and Aaron Tim. Our Board of Elders, Kirk Bessiner, Dean Blonick, Perry Craney, Brian Dock. Our Board of Stewardship, Dan Kintoff, Eric Dolly, Wayne Schneider, Josh Greenius. Our Board of Trustees, Bill Schmidt, John Schmelo, Eric Harmon, Devin Hurthy. Our bookkeepers, Tammy Crane. Our council officers are Rick Crane as president, Jake Boskovic as our vice president, our Hahnemann as our treasurer, and Terry Dart as our secretary. So now I want to continue with this looking at the committees and groups of St. Paul's. So if you have been or are on any of these committees, Please stand. What about St. Paul's, Altar Guild, Endowment Committee, Auditing Committee, Salary Review Committee, Organists, Ushers, Vestrymen, Security Committee, Sunday School Staff, Quilters, Money Counters and Financial Secretaries, Church Cleaners, Fellowship, Group and Life, Mission and Service Beyond the Congregation, Choir, Bell Choir. Nominating Committee, Constitution Committee, if you're part of EPIC or Cross Group. So if I missed any group or committee, I apologize up front. So if you're in church today, please stand. You are our largest committee, and without you, none of this gets done. So give yourselves a round of applause. Okay, you can sit down now. So our to-do list. And I stole some of this from Pastor Paul's sermon last Sunday. So love God, 
love each other. Be an active owner of St. Paul's. Um, Pastor Ma alluded to that this today at 11 o'clock is our call me. Please come check out the call me. We'd love to see everyone down there. You're all owners of this great church, this great school, this great community. So, like I said, without you, none of this happens. Thank you. God bless you all.